Patrick. The handsome young man turns away from the crowd and fixes you with his full, completely undivided attention. Sir, you are a beautiful human, but you could be so much more! What are you selling? I'm not selling anything! We are giving away the secrets to a more fulfilling, happy, and productive life. So it's Dianetics? Okay, I'll bite. What are the secrets to a more fulfilling, happy, and productive life? The first step is simply come and listen. Tomorrow night, Lynn Telestrian will be speaking about the importance of family in the sixth world. Please join us tomorrow, and the secrets to a better life shall be revealed to you. All right. I should probably... It keeps coming up. I'll explain what the sixth world is. You know how I said that they're like cycles of magic? Yes. Where its power waxes and wanes. Yes. Sh Shadowrun takes place in, in, in what's called the sixth world, because it's the sixth of these eras that's been, like, known. The fifth world is basically, was, you know, up until 2010. You know, when magic was, it was gone. Right. The, the fourth world was about 10,000 years prior. And that era, is, and like, which is like, and there was actually a, like a thriving magical human civilization then that's been completely kind of lost to history. Because eventually the magic, you know, w ran down again. You know. And humans became, you know, primitive and kind of had to start over. Right? Because the thing is, as the magic goes up and down, more and more stuff is able to come into our world, right? And at first it's just, you know, elves start being born, people can cast fireballs and whatnot. But eventually, stuff from other planes of existence starts coming through. Okay? And the more, mag more mana there is in the world, the more bigger and more powerful stuff can get through to our side, right? Right. And some of it is not friendly. So, there is... The, the Earth world has been in this cycle for who knows how long, where the magic goes up and down, and when it reaches its peak, these horrible Lovecraftian monstrosities known as the horrors come through to our side. And it's bad news. Okay? Okay. So, and, unfortunately, and it won't be, probably won't be for a while until they come back, but at this point, magic is on the upswing again. So sooner or later, we're going to reach the era where it reaches its peak. And then the horrors may return. Now, the reason Shadowrun has all this, like, backstory of, you know, going back tens of thousands of years uh -huh. is that it actually has a tie-in to another uh, RPG from FASA, F FASA, Earth Dawn, which was a, fa like, a fantasy RPG, right? Right. But, but it actually wasn't, it's, it wasn't actually set on, like, on a different world or whatever. It was set, like, in, like, Eastern Europe on Earth 10,000 years ago, in the same universe as Shadowrun during the Fourth World. Okay? So, like, the, the horrors originally were just things from Earth Dawn, but then they started, like, they started being referenced in Shadowrun as well. And certain other things, you know, like, from the Earth Dawn world actually, you know, become relevant in Shadowrun again. And I... The most recent edition of Shadowrun, because like the, the rights, you know, the rights of publishing rights to different things have moved around. So, I'm, in the most recent edition of Shadowrun, I think they might not be able to explicitly reference Earth Dawn anymore because the rights might be owned by different companies or something. Right. But that is, but but, but basically, Earth Dawn is the ancient prehistory of Shadowrun. Oh, that's neat. I like that. Yeah. So when people talk about the sixth world, that's why there was a whole, you know, this whole, you know, series of. It's not like literally a different world, but you know, these great changes that take place. Earth Dawn was actually sort of like almost like post apocalyptic fantasy in that like it takes place like after the you know the high peak of magic when the horrors have come. It's like after the magic has dropped enough that they've left, and like the survivors are kind of cl climbing out of the rubble for the first time in decades. You know, and, you know, building, you know, a new civilization. Interesting. Yeah. And actually, yeah. I will tell you, but we will eventually in this game actually meet someone who was actually around back then. Some elves live a really, really, really long time. That's all I'll say. The kid in front of you sports the trademark yellow of the Cutters gang. Young, clean-shaven, he stands like he owns the streets and everyone on it. He seems distracted, though, glancing around with increasing agitation. He looks over as you approach. Watch yourself. What do you want? You wouldn't be having to look for Coyote, would you? It's none of your fragging business. Who the hell are you? 
I'm the one who's going to pretend you have better manners. I need to find... I should be nicer than that. I'm Flandry. I'm looking for a coyote. I need to ask her some questions. I need you to tell me why you think that's my problem. I'm not her boss. Find her yourself. I was just at the Union. She's missed two shifts, and Mrs. Kabuta hasn't been able to reach her on her... Wait, just to realize, Mrs. Kabuta... Mrs. She's married? I guess. I just don't think of madams as having husbands. I don't know. Sadly, we never meet the fellow in the game. The tough guy's swagger seems to drain out of Paco. The cutter is gone. Before you stands a kid in a yellow jacket that doesn't quite fit. Coyote's missing? Oh man, that would explain... She was supposed to meet me here over an hour ago. Look, sorry for getting in your face like that. What else do you know? If she's missing, I need to find her. Do you know of a fixer named Mr. De Mix Mr. Delilah? Coyote had a meeting with him a few days ago. I know of him, sure. Blake doesn't allow any cutters to take side gigs, though, so I got no reason to deal with him. Coyote hasn't said anything about taking new work. Wait a minute. Trek! I know where she went. Damn, why couldn't she wait? Damn it! Paco, slow down. Where did she go? I'm Flandry. That should calm you. The Royal Apart- the Royale Apartments. The landlord, Stevie J, runs a drug ring out of that hellhole. Coyote grew, <coughs> grew up there. Doesn't like to talk about it much. He's been looking for a way to settle the score with that guy for years. A few days back, I heard Mr. Delilah was looking for runners to steal some sort of item out from under Stevie J's nose. She must have taken the job. I'm sure of it. And if his thugs caught her, a grim determination in Paco's eyes. I'm going over there. You coming? One more thing. Coyote had a receipt for some zebra meat from a place called Maury's Meat Market. Ever heard of it? You can ask. I probably should have asked that first. It would have made more sense. Because <laughs> now I'm kind of... What? No. no, I'm reading his reaction. Zebra what? meat? What? <laughs> See, he's as confused as we are, Nick. Look, that shop's just down the block if you want to check it out. But I'm going to go into the Royale, with or without your help. What's it going to be? I'm in. Don't worry. We'll get her back. Damn right we will. All right. Paco has joined the party. I was going to say earlier that the uh, one of the first things they tell you when you uh, Ooh, I have 13 start cards. sales. One of the first things they tell you what? When you go into sales training. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The first lines they teach you is, I'm not selling anything. <laughs> that's why I was, that's why, that is the secret to, I'm pretty sure, to why, why I once accidentally talked to a woman, I accidentally sold a woman this really expensive television at Best Buy. Have I ever told that story? No. I'm actually oh a really God. good, I'm, I'm a really good HDTV salesman. It's just, I can't be trying to be a good HDTV salesman. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the story when there's a law. The small meat okay. stand represents an enormous diversity of dead animals, from cow and canine to the exotic and paranormal. The pictures on the back of the stand feature a much older version of the man in front of you. Oh, he's Merlin. He ages backwards. Oh, nice. No. Benjamin Button. <laughs> as soon as he notices Paco, the proprietor's eyes become hard and angry. What do you want? You know we can't afford more. Relax, man. My friend just has a question. Everything cool here? Yeah, everything's swell. Monty continues to stare daggers in Paco's direction. Name's Manny. And what do you want? What would someone want to buy zebra meat for? Some people eat it. But I wouldn't recommend that. Tough as nails. We mostly sell it to corp security teams who use it to reward their hellhounds. The flamers go crazy for the stuff for some reason. That's interesting. Uh, Remember she was researching hellhounds? Yes. Oh, Drek. That's why Coyote wanted zebra meat. Everybody talks about the pet hellhound Stevie J keeps locked up somewhere in the Royale. And if she never picked it up... Whatever. Anything else? Five pounds? I have this receipt for an order of zebra meat. Still have it for me? I'll look it up. I, mission, I, mission item added. Zebra meat. I'll look it up. Yeah, I got it right here. Two days past the pickup time. Didn't think anyone was going to come for it. Here, it's all yours now. Do you know someone named Coyote? Nope. I don't go much in for that shaman stuff. What's your problem with Paco? Why don't you ask him? What the hell is that supposed to mean? means that your gang likes to stroll through here and relieve us merchants of our Nuyen. My dad stood up to them, and he's still in the hospital. That would be the older version in the pi of him in the picture. Look, that's not my problem. I'm at the bottom of the cutter ranks anyway. Couldn't do direct about that even if I wanted to. Tell that to my dad. I don't have time for this. We need to find Coyote. Let's see. Let's see if he... A little bit. All right, no. Okay. Basically, way back in, like, 2000, 2001, I... You know how employees at Best Buy dress, right? Yes. Oh, wait, oh, something something interesting is happening here. 
As your eyes adjust to the flashing lights, you spot the body of a woman, dead on the pavement behind the police line. Panic spreads across Paco's face. Oh no, is that Coyote? This isn't happening. God damn it! Paco, breathe. Take a closer look. Is that Paco, her? Paco, breathe. I'm Flandry. I'm Flandry. I'm Flandry, bitch! Paco, <laughs> Paco steps forward and breathes a huge sigh of relief. No. No, it's not her. Thank God. Look, let's oh, not ha some other dead lady. Look, let's not hang out around here too long. Alright? Too many Lone Star pigs around. Paco looks over at the victim again. It's too bad, whatever happened here. I'm not going to let anything like this happen to Coyote. Let's, let's talk to her. The Ripper took her eyes! Uh-oh. Remember he takes a different organ each time? Yeah. Someone else, I'm, someone I, I've seen her at the shack. I think I'm going to be sick. Oh, Ann Landers is a cop now. A tall, emotionless Lone Star officer blocks entry to the crime scene. Behind her, you spot the lively face of the organ grinder's coroner, Dresden. This is an active Lone Star investigation. Please step away from the barrier. You see, now, if you have etiquette security here, you can bullshit your way in by pretending to be a cop, basically. I'm here to see Coroner Dresden. And who might you be? It's all right, officer. He's with me. Dresden steps up to the barrier with a warm grin. The officer looks looks at you with poorly concealed skepticism. Okay, then. Make it quick. Lying on the pavement is the body of a young human female. Her eyes have been gouged cleanly out. You notice a string of bite marks along her left arm. Dresden. So what brings you out here? Hot on the trail of the dead man's killer? Coincidence, believe it or not. I take it I've stumbled across another Ripper murder. Yeah, that's what it looks like. As you can see, Ripper went for the eyes this time. Pretty clean work. You gotta hand it to him. A Ripper knows what he's doing. Or she, I suppose. D Dresden's a very gender-progressive guy, I, I guess. Well, it's ha he'd have to be. It's like 40 years from now, and we're... And he's a... Dr and, he's a and he's a dwarven coroner. Coroner. What do you know about the victim? Well, not much. Dresden, Dresden scratches his head absentmindedly, probably breaking some sort of sanitary protocol. She's been dead for about three hours. Her name was Lucy Warden. Worked at the Stuffer Shack just around the corner. Stuffer Shack and Sh it's, 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 it's like this like fast food franchise. Looks like she was just leaving work when it happened. Can you tell if she was subdued in some ways before her eyes were removed? That's a strange thing. There don't seem to be any signs of a struggle. Not a single bruise on her body. Yet she was clearly alive when the eyes were taken. Died of blood loss shortly thereafter. As to what knocked her out, I won't know until I can run some tests back at the lab. Remember when he, he said from Sam's body it looked like he'd been subdued by magic? Or like a combination of magic and drugs or something? Yeah. I thought... And he hasn't had a chance to take her back to the morgue yet, so... He I thought you ran the Redmond franchise. Isn't Pike Place a little far from home? Well, yeah, well, I don't really mind the change of scenery. Dresden laughs. The coroner for the downtown branch is out on maternity. So I told management that I'd cover for her on this one. Plus, I want the sicko caught. What about the bite marks on her arm? Ah! Completely unrelated! It appears some wild dogs dragged the body out here from the alley, sometime after her death. Any sign of magic here? There's evidence of an unusual explosion in the alley where Sam died. Now there's an interesting thought. No, nothing obvious, though. I'm sure when McCluskey shows up, he'll call in a full magical forensic team, though, just to be sure. So, the Ripper takes Sam Watt's liver and this woman's eyes. Any theories? Trophies of some sort, I suppose? Probably of some symbolic significance to the killer. Beyond that, I couldn't speculate. That's enough questions. Thanks, Dresden. Hey, I figure if I help you out, there's a better chance to get this scumbag off the streets a little sooner. McCluskey wants the Ripper in a cell, sure, but he couldn't care less if it takes another dozen murders. Good luck out there, eh? Dresden starts to turn his back to the body, then stops. Speaking of McCluskey, you should probably get going soon, before he shows up. 